everyone. Welcome to our webinar between the Drupal Association and SmartLing. We're giving it a couple minutes as more attendees join in. Um, so uh, bear with us. There's a few features you can use if you'd like to talk to each other. Um, the uh, chat feature at the bottom of the Zoom window will allow you to chat with other attendees. There's also a Q&A feature if you want to ask any questions. Um, this is going to be a little bit of an interactive presentation, so there will also be some polls popping up, so feel free to take a look at those as well. Um, but as I said, we're going to give it a couple more minutes just to let more people jump in and join, and then we will go from there. Thanks for your patience. Uh, yes, so if you'd like to ask questions about the event, you can do so either directly in the chat um, or you can use the Q&A uh, button. Hi, Askar, welcome to the event. Good to have you with us. Feel free to introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about where you're coming from. Um, if you're not one of our panelists, your um, microphone is muted by default, so please do use that chat if you're trying to reach us. And we'll get started again in just another minute or two here. Awesome, great to have everybody with us. We're really excited about this content. I think it's a topic that is near and dear to a lot of Drupal uh, site owners. Um, in fact, I was telling uh, uh, Andrew and Adrian earlier that Drupal.org is, is considering going multilingual sometime soon here. So um, I am actually uh, not just a presenter, I'm also an attendee. Um, okay. So any minute now, I think we're just going to go ahead and dump, jump in. I, I'm sure folks will continue to join as we go. Um, but let me kick it off with some introductions. So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, the Drupal Association and SmartLing webinar on five steps for translating your Drupal website with only one developer. Um, I will be hosting today. My name is Tim Lennon. I'm the executive director of the Drupal Association. Um, and uh, I will shortly be returning to my original role as the Director of Engineering as we bring a new Executive Director on board. Um, I'm joined by Adrian and Andrew, who I'll introduce in a moment. Um, some quick housekeeping. Um, all attendee microphones are muted by default. If you'd like to chat with us or ask questions, please use the chat function in Zoom. It's a button at the bottom of the window. You can also use the Q&A feature to ask specific questions, uh, which we can then either answer live or answer for you in text. Um, and then we're gonna be doing a little bit of an interactive component to this webinar. So we'll go through some uh, poll questions just to get a little bit of idea of where you are all at um, in your current uh, journeys looking at uh, translation um, and your needs for Drupal. Um, so, um, in terms of what we're really talking about today, um, we want to touch on, I think, a very real situation for a lot of teams and a lot of site managers, which is that, you know, if you need to do a multilingual project, if you need to do translation on your site, your product team probably wants your developers working on features instead. Um, so um, in this webinar, SmartLing is going to talk about the um, ways that we can kind of minimize the development time that's needed to do robust uh, multilingual translation. We have the VP of product, Andrew Sachs, and the director of brand strategy and communications, Adrian Cohn, who will talk about uh, SmartLing and Drupal in terms of a translation management system uh, to reduce those number of people involved. Um, so these, this conversation should benefit users who are both on Drupal 8 or Drupal 7. Um, and how to scale uh, your uh, translation and your global reach without having to improve headcount. Um, so without further ado, I will hand it over to Adrian and Andrew. Amazing, Tim, thank you so much. Uh, and thanks to everybody 
who's joined. I'm seeing a lot of new names. Peter, thank you so much for being here. Ryan, Scott, um, Marie, you guys are rock stars for, for joining us today. Um, actually, Andrew and I are doing this entire webinar live from the St. James Hotel in London. We're super, super excited to be here. And I think we've got a really solid uh, webinar for you guys today. I think um, you know, our goal is that you walk away with a lot of ideas and thoughts about how you can manage your global content pipeline through Drupal and uh, just some thoughts and strategies around how to do that at scale. So it should be great. And Andrew uh, is our, our VP of product. So I'm really excited to have you here today. Yep. Yeah. And we'll show both uh, the Drupal side as well as where all the translation actually takes place. And there's probably a, um, there's a little bit of a, a challenge just to understand how those pieces fit together, but we'll show how that works. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. And as Tim said, this is meant to be super, super interactive. So use that chat function. We're going to be watching it the entire time. And uh, feel free to ask questions. We'll definitely have time at the end for Q&A. Uh, and you can also reach me on Twitter. My handle is Adrian K. Cohn, as you can see over there on the slide. And uh, you can also tweet it smartly. We'll be taking a look at that and, and answering your questions as we go. But, um, we are here in London because tomorrow we have our second annual Global Ready Conference, which is right here in the St. James Hotel. We're super excited. If there's anyone on today's webinar that happens to be in London and you would like to come to the event, well, first, definitely answer this poll question. If you're near London right now, uh, let's see how people respond to this. But um, if you're here, we'd love to, to have you at the, at the conference. So let's see how, how we do on this, on this first poll. Awesome. It looks like most folks are in other places, but that's no big surprise. If we do happen to find anybody nearby, I think that would be great. Yeah, um, because that, that conference will be an, an awesome opportunity to expand further on the kinds of topics we'll be talking about today. Awesome. Yes. Well, one of the things that we're, we're also excited about, we, wanna, we definitely want to make this super interactive. And one of the ways that we're, we're doing this is by offering you an opportunity to win $100 Lyft credit, which I think is pretty sweet. It's really easy. For being a Drupal webinar, yeah. Yeah, just for attending. <laughs> All you have to do, it's really, really easy, is post a photo of how you're watching the webinar. Use the hashtag, move the world with words, which you can see on my t-shirt, move the world with words. And you're going to be automatically entered to win $100 Lyft credit. We're going to announce who won the Lyft credit at the end of this webinar. So stay tuned. But this should be really, really simple. Uh, the other day when we were actually doing a test run of this, I posted a photo from how we were doing the test run, and this is how it came out. If your photo looks like this, you use the hashtag move the world with words on Twitter or on Instagram or on LinkedIn. We're going to find it. We really appreciate your sharing the content, and we're going to give away one $100 Lyft credit. We did this last week at our Global Ready Conference. Uh, Kelsey happened to post a photo of her dog, whose name is also the name of one of our translators in Germany. And she won a Lyft credit and she was super excited. You can do that too. And just to be participatory, I'm gonna take a photo really quick of how we are delivering this webinar. If you go to my Twitter handle right now, you will actually see uh, how it looks from our end. And I think that this is really cool. Everyone on this call is a technologist. This is cool. Like, Five years ago, we couldn't be doing what we're doing, and I'm really excited that you guys are here. But uh, enough of that. Let's, let's get into the topic of today's uh, conversation. We want to start with a poll, uh, just so that we have an idea of like, where you guys are at in your, your journey. Um, first and foremost, what version of Drupal are you currently using? Or are you not using Drupal yet at all? Uh, right now, we've got D7, D8, and evaluating Drupal. See how, how people come. Yeah, come it's looking them. like we've got so far 50 to 60 percent Drupal 8, about 30 percent of folks on Drupal 7, and 10 percent in the evaluator mode. That's gone 60 30 in favor of Drupal 8 right now. Wow, that's pretty good. That's yeah, great. that's awesome. A lot of with, early, pretty early adopters, yeah. people who've made the change, which is awesome. Yeah, that's really good. Seeing folks who are who are already on the the next platform is great, especially you know in a, a year from now when Drupal 9 comes out, those folks on Drupal 8 will already be ready to go. 
um, since that upgrade path is, uh, is really significantly easier than it used to be. That's, that's fantastic. That's awesome. And Tim, can you remind me, what was the percentage of people on, on the call that are evaluating Drupal? It's about 10%. 10%. Okay, great. So we've got a fair number of uh, folks on the call who are at different stages in their life cycle. I'm confident that all of the content will be valuable for you, whether you're using D7, D8, or whether you're considering jumping over to Drupal for your content management system. So thanks for answering that. Uh, we did want to also point you in the direction of some great resources and just some like broad strokes knowledge. First, SmartLink supports Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Uh, we have two methodologies for supporting this product. The first is we have a pre-built integration, which we're continuously updating as Drupal releases new versions of D7 and D8. So it's a, a pretty simple, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, I was about to say, it looks like we have a misspelling, it's TMGMT. Uh, oh, it's, it's TMGMT. Uh, um, has been supporting um, Drupal for our customers for a while now, as far as pre-built integration with connectors and all the various plugins and content types and uh, modules and things that people might have might be using for Drupal. And most of our customers now are using using our connector based off of TMGMT. Um, we only probably have a few left who are kind of using our legacy connector, which is a more custom built system before TMGMT was really um, kind of the, the way to do localization in Drupal. Um, yeah, we have a lot of resources online for it and um, we're always happy to answer questions about it. That, so that's great. So we have this pre-built integration, Andrew, but what about customers that have really complex setups and, and maybe they want a, a lighter weight, easier way of translating a Drupal website? Yeah, so Smartling has a few different ways and just kind of a little bit of background on, on Smartling. We are a platform for managing content for translation and we need to get, of course, everyone's content into the platform in order to translate it. And so if someone has content in Drupal, then we want to make sure that content is in Drupal. Um, if, they, if they're using a other CMS or the marketing platform or something like that, we want to make sure that we get all of that content in, into SmartLink for translation. And then of course, put it back wherever it came from. We do have some other more lightweight or some other methods of actually translating content. Uh, we have a proxy-based system, which is a global, we call our global delivery network, which is kind of a layer that sits on top of websites and, and delivers localized websites in real time. Um, and also we can just accept different XML file types or JSON or whatever type of resource files people might have in the platform, which is also an option even in Drupal. Uh, but most of our Drupal uh, customers are probably using the, uh, the integration system. Yeah, well, that's, that's great to hear. And uh, all of this information, by the way, it's on our website, smartling.com. And if you go to help.smartling.com and you're like really interested in getting the technical details, you can learn all about the integration and all the functionality that we're gonna talk about today in our support center. So just a couple of resources. We're gonna circulate this deck after the webinar. So if you wanna go back and take a look, you'll be able to. And on top of that, we will be recording this webinar. We are recording this webinar and we'll be making it available to all attendees and posting on the Drupal Association YouTube channel. Awesome, thanks for that, Tim. So the five steps, we wanna go over these five steps and while doing so, we're gonna show you a demo of the SmartLink product. We're going to also tell a customer success story about one customer who's done an amazing thing with, with Drupal and with, with Drupal for SmartLink. Um, and we wanna just do this in a, in a really interactive way again. So the first is you really need to know why you're doing this. Um, and that may sound a little bit uh, silly, like why are we translating? Well, obviously we wanna reach people, but we think there's a really important like business case behind this and we wanna just explore that for a minute, uh, but then th there are four other ways that we think you can, you can really manage translation at scale uh, for your Drupal content. The first is you have to find a way to automate the upload and download of your content to a translation management system. Where number two, you, you could easily manage the entire translation pipeline, right? Yep. Yeah, and, and it, it, the automation piece is really important. Like most people are probably developers, I would guess, on, on the call. And like, you don't want to be passing files in and out. You don't want to be emailing files to some agency to translate it. 
and you don't have to worry about down, re-downloading them and putting them back into Drupal, whatever that process might look like. So the automation piece, no one should ever, no developer should ever have to worry about a file being moved around, rather than download a file or chase something back and trying to get it back into, into the source platform. Totally. So we're going to spend a fair amount of time on that automate piece. We're going to actually pull up uh, a Drupal instance and show you exactly what it looks like to submit and retrieve content. So that will be a really, really helpful part of this webinar. But um, you do have to translate the content. So we want to talk a little bit about the ways that you can efficiently manage translation at scale. And lastly, you also need to be able to report on all of this. You need to learn from your successes and from, from areas where you think you might be able to improve your translation process. So these are the five steps that we recommend all Drupal users to take when managing translation at scale. So uh, really quick, we want to get an idea for like where, where you are in the translation lifecycle. I know that Bob, you've said that you're, you're new to multilingual and translations, but let's throw a poll up there and let's take a look at uh, where everyone else stands in terms of are you translating? Uh, is your company currently translating or, or not? Hey, Tim, can you throw the poll up there? Yeah, I would like to. I'm afraid the polling here has just frozen up on me real quick. So, um, you know, could you please um, perhaps uh, put your answers in the chat while I try and sort this out? Thanks, everybody. Sorry about that. Let's do that. Why not, why not a, a Y for your currently translating and an N if you're not not translating, let's see. All right, Richard says, no, Marie, you're translating, that's awesome. Um, currently translating, translating Maria, awesome, awesome. Bob, yes, you're, you're new to this, which is great. Legal documents, Patrick, thank you. Great, great. All right, so it looks like we've got like a pretty healthy mix between folks who are new to translation and some folks who are um, looking to get started. A couple of folks using machine translation. Oh. I mean, machine yeah. translation is a big deal right now. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about yeah. that. Um, John, if you're interested in learning more, if you, if you put a Y in the chat right now, we can talk a little bit more about machine translation a little later. But all that sounds great. Cool. All right, we'll do that. So let's, um, let's, let's, let's move on. It, it's really important uh, that companies translate. It's super, super important. And I'd like to just walk you through this really quickly. The research says that people are not going to buy products or services if the content is not delivered in their native language. Uh, and on the other side of that spectrum, consumers are six times more likely to buy your product if the product that you're serving, the content experience that you're, that you're delivering is delivered in their, their native language. And 56.2% of consumers said that the ability to obtain information in their own language is more important than price, which means it tells me, Andrew, they're willing to pony up for content and products so long as it is in their language. So this, this is really important. The other trends that we've seen, and this is quite obvious, is that there are way more people online than there ever have been before. And that trend is not going to reverse. Right here, you can see that year over year, we're getting way, 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 way more numbers of users on the internet. So uh, the, the, the point of showing this is that there are gonna be a lot more folks who are buyers on the internet. And what we're seeing as well, uh, this is sourced from CMO, is that people are spending a lot of time engaging with digital content. So, you know, the folks on this call who are building and developing Drupal websites, you're doing it for a good reason. Consumers are on your website property, they're using your web app, and they are engaging with all of your content. And boy, they're spending money, right? 2018. Yeah, I, I think when we look at our customers who are um, successfully translating and doing it at scale. I mean, they probably fit most of these categories, especially the top ones. And they've identified already why it is important to them. And they know that it's important to their business. It's critical to their business to have a localized website. Um, and all they would probably all fit in these categories, especially travel and fashion and beauty. Totally. Totally. And Dan, thank you for your comment. Um, love to, to chat with you about that later. You're right. I'd love to see some other data, I'm sure there is other data out there that, that may be a little bit more compelling, but I think it is worth noting, like 
pretty obvious. I mean, if you, if you can't consume content, like if you can't read it, it's going to be hard to, to make a decision. But, um, you know, I, I think what, what would also be interesting, Andrew, now that we've seen the breakdown of consumer spending by industry in 2018, what business vertical are you guys in? Um, I think that poll may still be down. Unfortunately, it looks like the poll function is still down. So please do use the chat again. Just type on in. We've got higher ed for sure. It looks like given Dan's question earlier, there's at least a couple higher ed folks. Manufacturing, pharma. Cool. Hey, John, just really quick so we understand. When you say higher ed, are you working for, well, I see a, a lot of folks here. Um, are, are, you guys, are you guys in higher ed, are you working for um, like an online uh, like a like a MOOC or is it that you're working for a university just would love to, to understand where you guys are government great uh, university over here great traditional university great 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 awesome awesome yeah I'd be very curious to, to learn more about the types of universities that you guys are representing um, you know global citizens global students now uh, so you definitely have to be attracting students around the world um, so that would be yeah, interesting. Yeah, like university content is probably like all over the place and probably the admissions process and, and that type of thing would probably be the critical component, although they probably translate tons of other internal content and, and white papers and things like that. But yeah, yeah it'd be interesting. Very cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for dropping in the comments, guys. We, we really help. It helps us to know who we're speaking with um, during these webinars. So, okay. You know, we want to attack today by sharing these, these five steps, but in order to set those up, we wanted to share a couple of things that we feel are challenges in the industry to just set the stage. So the first, and Andrew alluded to this, is that right now a lot of companies are using a very, very manual process to translate their content. Typically, this takes place in the form of current, like manually downloading files and emailing them to translators and then merging it back with the code base when the translations are done. It just takes your time away from building new and better code, yeah. better experiences, right? And there's so many things that come when you you start thinking about how you're gonna package up your content, send it out and get it back. And things like, are you, do you have placeholders and do you have HTML tags in your content? And do you, are you gonna try to do a dip between new content and old content? Um, and if you're paying for translation, if how you package it up may, may influence what you actually end up paying for the translation, uh, which is also kind of goes to, to number three as well. Uh, so there's so many things that go into this manual component. And if you are doing it manually, then you don't have that process set up to really take care of a lot of those kind of complex elements. Totally. And if you're experiencing these, these problems, drop a note in the chat so we just get an idea of where you guys are at. But the, the second challenge is that since a lot of companies are, are managing this without a platform, they have no visibility into the translation process. So no dashboard on our translations complete, um, no, no sort of insights into uh, how long it's gonna take for the, the translators to finish their job, things like that. The third problem is it's really tough to manage translation quality and cost, and we're gonna dive into that a little bit further. And lastly, you don't have analytics. You don't have data to figure out how to optimize your process. And instead you kind of like, you know, lick your finger and put it up to the wind and see which way the wind's blowing. And it's, it's just not a very data driven approach to, to managing things. And we're, we're definitely working in a, in a data driven world. So, so really quick, quickly, uh, if that poll is working, I don't know if it is. Um, yeah, sorry, we're, we're still trying to fix it in the background here. It's, it's a built-in Zoom feature, and unfortunately, it's just frozen up, and I don't want to reconnect because we might lose the whole call. So, um, yeah, so um, for these challenges, folks, again, if you can please use the, uh, use the chat and talk about whether you have issues with, with uh, the four categories that we saw uh, above on the previous slide. Maybe we, maybe we can show those again for folks to type that in. Definitely. So if you are having, if you're really the, the, main, the main driver that we typically see in webinars with developers is that number one, manual uh, process. But yes, John, translation quality from Google, totally got it there. Yeah, of course, if you haven't started, well, it's good for you to know that these are the problems because 
boy, will they become really problematic quickly if, if you're not aware of them early on. Um, continue to drop in your thoughts as we go, but I do want to keep moving. Um, and I want to start by, by sharing a story about a customer of ours who has absolutely massive reach. They have over 100 million monthly active users, and they're one of the top access websites in the United States. Um, and and it's, it's, it's remarkable the type of reach that they have. They have a massive global audience. They're supporting something like 40 or 50 languages. It's an application that everyone on this call and most people globally are using at least once or you're using a competitor of this product at least once per day. Um, and they're selling media on their, on their website to drive revenue. Um, so that's just to say it's really important for this customer to be translating their content so that they can drive ad revenue, not just from where they are home based, but also in, in the countries that they're operating in overseas. So really, really big properties. And I uh, just want to share a little bit about their tech stack. They're using Drupal 8. They're also using GitHub for their iOS and Android content. So they've got a lot of different content types that they need to manage. And over time, uh, they've been translating a lot of content, so, so much content. In fact, this year, they're on pace to translate about 5 million words. So they're really, really ramping up all of their translations. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's just growing year over year. So uh, these guys had a big problem when they came to us. The problem was that it took them over four days to get their content from the point where they submitted it for translation to having it shipped to their own users. Yeah. And what's worse, Andrew, is that they needed something like eight or nine developers to manage this process. Yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, first of all, that, that four plus days, it may not seem like a lot, especially if you're on the call and, and your turnaround times are like four or eight or seven days, but Four, four, four plus days is, I mean, that's, you, you can't really be competitive in this particular industry that this customer's yeah. in if you're shipping content four days later. It just yeah. doesn't work. Would you release your app and wait four days for all the language to be done or your website? Like, it's out of control. And, and it's, it's I, and that's sort of been the thesis of Smartling for so long is that we were really built as a software company, having most of the people coming from software in the beginning in that we knew that we needed to build websites and apps and things and get things out quickly. And you just can't wait four days for content to be translated. Totally. Yeah, we've experienced that as well inside the Drupal Association. You know, we do these coordinated press releases about the upcoming features of Drupal 8.7 or the upcoming release of Drupal 9. And we have volunteer translators who help us get the, get the word out. But a lot of the time, there's some lag time there. And it just doesn't feel like you're giving your uh, international customers that experience of being a first class citizen. So, totally. We should talk. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, th these are the ways that th this customer was successful. And we're going to walk through each of these so we don't need to spend so much time on this slide. But this, these are the results. These are the results. They went from shipping content in more than four days to having a turnaround time of between one and two days. And they went from having eight or more developers work on every single deployment to zero, to zero. I mean, that's, that <laughs> sounds good to me. <laughs> that is impressive. So Andrew, I think that what we should do really quickly, they use a uh, Drupal integration between Smartling and Drupal 8, and they use our repository connector for all of their iOS and Android streams. Um, but I think we should show everybody how yeah. this works, because this is yep. really what you came here for. Um, you want to see uh, how customers are submitting content from Drupal into Smartling, the translation management system, um, all of this is, uh, you know, a demo account that we're using. So um, we're gonna we're gonna walk you through all of the different automation features. And naturally, since we've logged into a bunch of different tabs here, we're gonna click through tabs to to make it a little more efficient. Yeah, and and the um, the point about like even that customer who's using GitHub as well as Drupal, there probably in your organization there's not just one source and content that you do have ios apps and android apps and you probably have content coming from word documents and excel files and you also have a content coming from drupal so you need a place to really centralize and manage that so i'm just going to do a quick high level overview of smartling 
and then go to Drupal and then show what that content looks like when it comes into Smartling. So the intention of Smartling is to be that that area where all of your content comes in from, whether it is Drupal or someone is dropping a Word document in or an InDesign file or whatever it might be, all that content is centralized in Smartling. And then it is, you can track it and monitor cost and see when content is gonna be completed. And then it automatically should go back to wherever it came from. And there's various levels of management that you may or may not need. And the most sophisticated people probably need a lot of tools to manage translation and manage different vendors or um, manage internal people to help do review. And the probably the newer people probably just need things to make sure that the content is in, in a translation workflow. It's getting translated and that it can go back, back out. So I'm just gonna jump quickly around here. Um, so generally in Smartling, when, when content comes into, um, into the platform, uh, it goes in what we call a job. And this is really a temporary bucket that helps manage content. And if you're familiar with translation in Drupal, Drupal also has the concept of a job. So there's a Drupal job and there's also a Smartling job. And in this case, we can see that this is just some test content that came in and we do give some details around it. We also give a cost. And then when it's authorized, it goes into what we call a workflow and that content. And this is again, there's as much management information as you want to have, but you also don't have to kind of deal with that if you don't want to deal with it. And when we talk about connecting Drupal to a TMS or to Smartling, it's really passing files in and out. So it's when you push the button in Drupal, it's passing an XML file. When you um, move, or then whenever we translate the content, we're pushing another XML file back in Drupal. So it's really just file management at this point. Um, so if you also if you just look at a couple other things, I talk, talk for a second about workflow. And there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of manage workflow. And I think there were some people who were talking about some manual processes and, and Google Translate. A lot of times the workflow will help influence the speed and quality, as well as the cost um, for translation. If you are just using Google Translate, then maybe there might be some, some quality concerns. But it, maybe you would have some people doing some editing on Google Translate, and that will improve the quality and as well as keep the cost pretty low. Or maybe you just want to have human translation all the way through. So there's all these different ways that you can kind of mix and match uh, translation methods for your type of content. Um, so Smartling, again, we have tons of reports to do kind of the analysis and, and things that will help um, help you understand how much savings you're getting by using the platform, if there's any problems, like maybe there's a misspelled word on your Drupal site, um, or maybe there's, uh, you have a button somewhere and the translation doesn't fit in that area and you, the translator's gonna say, hey, this content is not gonna fit this button, what should I do? So a lot of different management, management tools here. So let me jump over to Drupal quickly. So in Drupal here, and then this probably looks pretty familiar. Again, this is just a staging demo site. Um, here I have, I've just created a page, just a simple note, it just has a few words for translation in it. Um, if I jump over to, uh, to the translation tab, and there is the sources section, I can submit the content for one or more language. And again, this is really, this is TMGMT, and its, uh, its interfaces. So Smartling, we use the standard Drupal um, kind of objects and interfaces. And, um, but then we also insert some of our own kind of custom tools and, and information. I'll get to that in a second. So here we can see that Smartling is really configured as the provider here. And in Smartling, you'll create a new job. So you'll, you'll in fact, you'll select a bunch of content in Drupal, you'll say, I want to translate this content. You'll name the job, new content to translate. You'll say when you want it to be authorized, and then you get it submitted um, into Smartling for translation. So let me jump over to see what that looks like. All right, so here I submitted this job. This was web page for a site has 12 words, which was the, um, I think the title, as well as this just little heading here. And I don't have a cost yet on it. And it's basically in, in a workflow. And we can see that it came in with 
a, a single file. And in this case, Team GMT is creating a file for every source to target language, so every English to German, English to French, English to Spanish, whatever that kind of configuration is, it's going to um, create a file, an XML file, and just submit it to Smartling for translation. So on the Smartling side, we really think having um, being able to have all this visibility into both the file information, whatever metadata, trans whatever metadata might need to be submitted for description. Maybe there's some reference information that should be should be submitted. All that information is really important. But one of the most important features um, is having context. And in this case, you can see again, this is kind of a demo site. But the context is really how the web page will look to the translator or the mobile app or the Word document. And for Smartling, that's a really critical component. And when we built our integration to Drupal, context is a, is a really kind of a first class citizen as far as the type of functionality that we build. And we build that into really all of our, our different tools. And we can see that this is representative of what the translator would actually see when they are translating. So just to chime in, like, yep. this is so, so important. In fact, our, our data shows that this improves translation quality by 30%. So like, why wouldn't you want visual context if you know that it can improve your quality by 30%? Like, it's like, it's, an, it's a no brainer. And for you guys who are developers, you've probably experienced the pains of translating content without context because what you probably experience is you're you're sending uh you're, you're retrieving translations from whomever is translating your content right now you go to merge it with your code base and the the, the strings are breaking buttons or the experience just totally doesn't look right this tool eliminates that problem it completely eliminates that problem yep yeah and and then and you can also see things like 158 characters left. So this was a title field and we know that or a headline and we know that it has a limit on how much content can be there. So we're telling the translator, you can't go over this limit. And then we'll give them an error message if they go over that limit. And one thing I just wanted to point out quickly in thinking about how you're doing the development and the things that can impact how your site is, um, is built and what, how, what it looks like. And thinking about Drupal is one thing, but also thinking about just maybe even other content that might be influencing Drupal or that might be pulled into Drupal or maybe somewhere else on your site. Things like placeholders. Is it hello, Adrian, hello, Tim, hello, Marie, and that's a placeholder. Making sure that we are maintaining those placeholders. Is there number consistency? Tags is a huge one. If there's a bold tag and you don't, and the translator skips the bold tag, then you now have a broken HTML structure and you don't want that. So there's a lot of different ways that you control kind of quality from a basic level in addition to spell check and number consistency and spacing and all those things that, that are also built in. Yeah, this is super important and it actually really fits in well with the next theme that we typically go over, which is that manage theme. You, you really want to make sure that you are proactively and programmatically ensuring translation quality. And that's exactly what these quality check tools do. We have about 30 of them in the platform right now. And what I think is so deeply valuable about this is that you or your localization manager or whomever is responsible for the target languages, they can go in here and they can fine tune the different quality checks so that it will interfere with the translator's workflow or not based on the quality check that, that is really important to you. Yeah, and the good thing, like this takes care of that, those, all the issues that come up when you do get bad code or bad spacing or line breaks that are messing up the content. All these things are handled automatically so that the developer or, um, or even the localization manager doesn't have to deal with it. And that's, that's kind of both the automation component and the management component. That, really you should be managing by exception. If there is a major problem, then someone needs to kind of go and find that to figure out the major problem. But all of these smaller details should be taken care of automatically. Totally. I think this kind of automated quality control in combination with the what you see is what you get kind of preview of the translated material is actually really, really cool. 
Um, does that system integrate with sort of workflows and permissions and things like that for users in terms of controlling who's got translation access and things of, things of that nature? Yeah, so on the Smartling side, we have a pretty robust, um, robust system for managing uh, users, including things like, let me see if I can go into one. There's a lot of different ways that you can control what people have access to. One is workflow. So users only have access to the content that is available to them in their workflow, depending mm. on your role. And then there's different levels of permissions as far as giving someone ability to authorize content or maybe control the quality checks. Um, so really you can have that fine grain control as to who, who might have access to different parts of the platform. That's awesome, very cool. <clears throat> and guys, we know it's a, there might be a little bit of background noise. Um, <clears throat> we're sorry about that, but we, uh, we want to keep this super conversational and fun and upbeat. I know it might be a little distracting, but hang in there. We've got a couple more cool things to share. Yeah, so, so if you can kind of understand how this is working now. So now we have the content has come into the platform um, from Drupal. So someone did the submission process directly from Drupal. They've packaged up a set of content. They've said it's okay to translate. Now it's in the SmartLink platform and it's starting to make its way through a workflow. And again, that might be Google Translate for someone. It may be just tra human translation. There may be a human and then uh, maybe an, you have an internal employee who's going to review a certain language. So really anyone can kind of participate in the process and it really depends on the type of quality you want. Um, maybe the oversight if you require internal people to participate as well as the cost and maybe speed. If you have five different steps and five different people participate in a workflow, then of course that's going to take longer than, than maybe just one step. Um, so now the content is making its way through the workflow. You have visibility as to where it is, where this job is, how it is making its way through the workflow. If there's any hang up, if there's any issues, this one has no issues. Um, you can really manage all of that directly in the platform. And from within Drupal, you always have access to the exact progress. So this is, again, this is, it's, a, it's a little bit confusing because Drupal and Smartling both use the word job, but you have access to the content as it is in, um, as it, the progress is in Smartling. And as the, that content is, um, is completed in Smartling, then it's automatically pulled back into Drupal. And you can always have direct access both to the file in, um, in the Smartling dashboard, as well as be able to just download the content anytime you want uh, in Drupal. So if this had translations and we had actually completed this translation, then you can download that content um, and put it back into Drupal kind of at any time. But again, the idea is that you don't really have to manage and worry about this as the content is completed in Smartling, it is automatically pulled back into Drupal. So uh, that's kind of the, the long and short of how the content will go from Drupal to Smartling and then back again. The, some of the things that um, we think about whenever people are, are working with us and working with Drupal uh, is really the, when the complexity starts to happen is, of course, Drupal is a CMS that anyone can customize to do whatever they want to and however they want to use it. And there's tons of modules and tons of different things that that can be um, included in different components and different parts of the site. Um, so people have, of course, extended and built a lot of customizations. And when we start to work with customers who are using Drupal, that's kind of the, one of the first things we look at is like, and customers will ask, do you support this particular module? And is it, and, and we go and we look to see, well, is it supporting, does it support internationalization and localization natively? Does it have a place to store the translations? Can we actually get content out of it? Um, so those are some of the things that we think about. The, at the simplest, it's passing content back and forth. Um, and then we try to rely on T and GMT as much as possible to, um, to kind of do the, the actual management of packaging up the content and then pulling it back, back in and putting it into, into the right place. Awesome. So, I mean, What's so important here, again, is you can so easily plug Smartling into Drupal and automate your translation pipeline. And there are a bunch of other features that you can use with Smartling. 
to automate various parts of the workflow that make it super easy to manage all of this at scale. So really exciting. I think we, you know, we covered, we covered a fair most. number of these, um, these other tools like manage uh, just a couple of points when you're using a product like SmartLink, for example, you will have the ability to really take a look at all of your translation jobs and know where you are in the translation process. You'll be able to get an idea for what a translation job is going to cost before you click submit. And we also calculate all of your translation memory and everything like that before we give you the estimate and before the translator starts to work on it. Yeah, this is such an important piece, especially around uh, like how much are you spending if you resubmit content? Are you saving money because you're reusing content that was already translated? As well as some of the communication problems around content. Like is there, uh, is there a spelling issue? Is there a spacing issue? And we have a lot of different ways. Uh, Tim mentioned, are there uh, ways to control roles and access? And, and of course, if you have people in your organization that need to participate, we support different, every, anyone can participate. We also have like a single sign on. Um, so anyone kind of in, in an organization can easily sign into the platform for their organization, as well as just communication with Slack, via Slack, posting different issues and posting different things um, to Slack. So there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of manage and communicate, um, communicate around this. And I know that Drupal is often used a lot in like advertising and marketing agencies to kind of really help their customers build out sites. And this is a great way to kind of, including translation, including a package such as a smartly connector in probably a standard build that you might use for a bunch of customers is a really great way to, to kind of have the, the half easy button to get to the translation process. I think that would be a really good use case for all of our higher ed uh, folks as well. There's often sub sub departmental websites and things like that where you might want to delegate roles in just the same way that you described in the higher ed environment. Totally. So we want to do, we do want to make sure we have some time for questions and we want to be respectful of your time. You know, we, we showed you the translation interface that we provide, the visual context component, super, super important. And what we also want you guys to think about is that software is super important, but the people behind translation are also really, really important. And we've actually had a language services division in our company since 2009. And we've got some unbelievable results uh, from, from our work. And one of the most important things is that you actually know who the translator is. And uh, that's important to us because we want you, we want you guys to have a direct relationship with the translators that we, that we work with who create your content in all the different languages. So to that end, we've got a, a completely innovative model where we actually just work with freelancers and you have a direct relationship with your translators which is great because it helps you to get to market 50% faster than it would if you were to go through a traditional language services provider. And our team is killing it. Last year, nearly 100% of the content was delivered on time and 99%, uh, almost 99% of the content was approved by the customer without making any changes to the content. So we're really excited about that. And we also saved our customers money uh, because we've eliminated project management fees. For those of you who are new to translation, watch out for project management fees. And we have no minimums. We have a one word minimum when submitting new translations, one word. Yeah. Um, if you're new to translation, be, be, be careful about that. You might have to submit like 10, like 50 or 100 words per language just to get uh, a, a translator to look at it. So the costs really, really stack up. Um, and our people are just amazing. If you want to learn more about the translators who work with SmartLink, go to smartlink.com slash translators. We just finished a trip around the world where we actually met all of these people like Daniel um, and Juana. They are unbelievable people. Um, yeah, it's, it's such an important component. You probably saw from, from some of the demo earlier, maybe a little bit in the permissions areas that you can like we have different roles for agencies and vendors and kind of anyone can participate in the process. So if you have your own agency and your own vendor or your own friend who's doing translation, they can of course participate in the process. But one, and, and we are the software platform that enables that. But we, as Adrian was saying, we've been offering language services and translation for a long time. And if I saw there were some people who were in marketing and then education and a few other things, and you want people who 
know about your product, to know about your service. If you're going to have people translate things, you want them to know about your terminology and to really care about your product because that's how you really get good quality. Um, and, and our language source, it takes a lot of time and care into kind of pulling that in. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think, you know, we're, we're particularly excited about this, this landing page slash translators because you actually will get to know the people who translate your content. It's so, so cool to, to learn more about these users. Um, we're, gonna, we're about to hop over to the questions and I just wanted to, to throw two reminders out there. First is start asking those questions in the Q&A section below uh, so that way Tim can take a look at what sort of questions you have. Uh, you could put it in the Q&A section or I suppose you can also put it in the chat section. Yeah, um, either one's fine. And the, the other thing I wanted to remind you guys of is if you post a photo of how you're watching the webinar, you could, with the hashtag, move the world with words, that way we know you did it, um, you can win that $100 lift card. And right now, I've got my photo right up there on Twitter. And uh, we're hanging on, we're waiting for some other folks to add stuff. Um, because it would be quite embarrassing if I was the one who won the $100 lift card. Uh, <laughs> that would be cool. You know, I want you, I want someone on this call to win that $100 uh, gift card. And yes, Dan, we can absolutely set up a customized demo and we'll reach out to you after this call to get that, to get that rolling, but definitely send the photo out. Um, we want you guys to walk away with a hundred dollar gift card. Just a, a reminder, the way that our customer was successful is they, number one, they knew exactly why they were translating. They wanted to enable users around the world to access their product and they needed to sell ad space on their website. Number two, they use the Drupal integration. They use the Drupal integration. Yep. They use it. They're automating the process. Yep. They went from having eight developers to zero, four plus days to turning around content to one or two days. And they've got this unbelievable translation management platform that drives translation quality. It allows them to have visibility into the process and they can analyze every single thing that happens in the translation pipeline so that they can get even better over time. So that's what we've got for you today. Um, of course, you know, we have a poll question. The poll may not work. If you want to learn more about Smiling, do what Dan did. Just drop the question in the chat or say you'd like a demo. We'll make sure to follow up with you. But we see that there are a few questions. So Tim, why don't yeah. you take that? Sounds good. Yeah, we've definitely got a couple questions come in. And there were a few that came in up in the back scroll that I've jotted down as well. So one was, um, you addressed this a little bit when talking about uh, the platform itself and going through the demo process, but can you just speak a little bit more broadly to how costs are managed and calculated for when you're doing uh, translations of content? Yeah, so there's, there's a few different ways, um, and really it depends on the type of people who are doing the translation and the type of mix of translation you might be using. And there's different use cases for different types of um, type of translation providers like Google Translate or Microsoft Translator or something like that or DeepL or some of these other providers are a great way to kind of start on some pieces of content. And we really, we've seen, um, just to kind of go on that a little bit, we've seen, I think like a, maybe almost a, a third of our customers now are using machine translation in a meaningful way. But they're often doing that with some sort of what's called post editing. So someone uses machine right. translation and then they edit it. But generally there's sort of some sort of um, a kind of a per word rate or an hourly rate or something that is negotiated. And then you can reuse content that has been translated. Smiling has a lot of intelligence. We built, built a lot of tools to kind of reuse as much as possible, which is really where people start to see cost savings. And we also have some additional tools to help in the source content creation process so that you stop create, if you change one word from the to an or something or add a dash, that can imp impact what you may need to translate. So you can stop that, those problems up front rather than having to deal with it and when you end up paying for translation. That makes a lot of sense. And I can imagine a scenario again in, in higher ed or in pharma, which I think one of our attendees is in, where you have sort of a multi-site installation or at least many sites out in the wild for various brands and I, I could totally see a situation where it's like there's this one paragraph that's going to be on all of them let's reuse that content rather than resubmitting for every site 100 percent, and, and even if you think about your marketing website 
versus your maybe Android app or your help center or whatever, you probably want to reuse content across those different applications. For sure. Okay, a few more questions. Want to make sure we're cognizant of time. So one, uh, the next one here is, does this, uh, how well does this system work for content that is uh, behind a login, behind a permissioned uh, wall? Yeah, so um, if you're with in Drupal, the, uh, the TMGMT system, the Smartlink integration, handles everything within the Drupal platform. So even context, it will send and push the context into Smartlink. So Smartlink isn't trying to go and get content behind, um, behind a login. And as far as us, we can also, also push content to Drupal once it's completed from Smartlink, so a, a callback essentially. And we can handle a login in those cases. It, it, for getting content back into Drupal, there's always also a background task that will run in case something doesn't work. Gotcha. So yeah, logins are not a problem. <clears throat> Sounds good. And then a last question that we have right now, although if anyone wants to throw in one more, feel free to drop in chat or in the Q&A feature. Um, this is a technical question, really, so I'm, I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer it entirely on this call, but uh, the question is from Patrick. It says, I've evaluated the D8 SmartLink suite for my organization with a lot of success so far, but the only issue I observed when the translated XML files downloaded, it doesn't populate the review form for approval. Any thoughts? Um, so the review form in, uh, in Drupal, if you're doing the, where it has the side-by-side, -side, I believe is what uh, Patrick was talking about. Honestly, I'm not sure <laughs> off the top of my head. It sounds like we should um, probably touch base and investigate that a little bit more. Cool. So it sounds like something that, Patrick, if you reach out um, to Andrew or Adrian, we, we can touch base on that offline and try and get that taken care of for you. We've saved so, your name. And we look. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just took a screenshot, actually. So, Patrick, we've got it. We're going to get to you as soon as this call is over to get more information. Okay. And then let's see. Yes, and he, he has just replied in chat. He'd love that. He has sample files for you to look at. So that's great. So I think that is all the questions we have. Um, I'll keep an eye on it for the last minute here. But um, I want to say a tremendous thank you to Andrew and Adrian for joining us and to SmartLink for their support for the Drupal Association and the Drupal community. Um, they've been really great partners uh, in working with people who work in the Drupal world to help um, enhance the multilingual cap capabilities that Drupal has built in and then make the actual management and translation process much easier. So we're really grateful to have them as partners and really grateful that they could join to, to give this information and to share it with all of you. So um, at, as we finish this call, as I said before, we will be sending out a recording to everyone who's attended or registered for this event. Um, and then Adrian and Andrew will also send out uh, the deck so that we'll, you'll be able to reach out if you want to learn more. Um, any final thoughts? Yeah, like we're, we're here. We'll sit on the call for another two or three minutes. That way, if people have questions, we're here to answer them. We want to make, you know, your localization journey as easy as possible. If you don't have the question today, no problem. You can go to smartling.com and a little, little chat bot will actually pop up in the bottom right hand corner. And you can just throw your question in there and a live human being will get to your question on our website. And uh, we're going to help you. We're going to do everything that we can to help you be successful, whether it's with SmartLing or with somebody else. We just want to help. Uh, we want to help developers make translation easier uh, for your for your for your company, for your project, whatever it is that you're working on. So thank you all so so much for joining us. We hope it was valuable to you, and uh, we would appreciate your feedback as well. And uh, yeah, I think. I think we'll just hang out for a minute to see if anyone else has any questions. Thank you, Maria. We really appreciate your being here. And John, thank you so much, especially the folks in higher ed who joined. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we'd love to learn more about what you are thinking about and how you're um, working with Drupal and translation and, and higher ed. That's something we'd like to know more about. Totally. Yeah. Totally awesome. agree. So yeah, we'll hang out. Feel free to drop off if you don't have questions. If you do, or if you just like to share a little bit more about your use case so that uh, Adrian and Andrew can learn a little bit more about what you're looking for. Feel free to drop that in um, while we hang out here for another couple minutes. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, thank you very much for attending, everybody. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, Tim. Thank Bye. you for helping to organize this and uh, for everybody who joined. Really, it's it's so great to be um, you know part of a community. I think that it's and I and I know some uh, before I actually moved to the brand team at Smiling, I represented customers at Smarling. And I, I had a number of Drupal customers and 
every single person who I met with not only raved about using Drupal, but they raved about the Drupal community. And they always have like their buddies in the same city. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I've been to DrupalCon. Uh, I probably haven't, I haven't been in a couple of years, but um, uh, yeah. I think some other people from Spartan have gone, but yeah, it's always a pretty good event. Yeah, maybe we'll see you folks there at uh, DrupalCon. Uh, well, Amsterdam is coming up uh, in October, but also Minneapolis next year in uh, May. So that would, be, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Very good. Count me in. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, the Especially the Amsterdam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's see. So, and then just as a reminder for folks, um, you know, we said earlier that um, uh, if there was anyone in London that we wanted to help them go to go to the conference you're attending, um, it didn't seem like there were any people directly there. But if you have folks on your teams, perhaps maybe they could reach out and and uh, uh, and something like that, get someone over to you. Totally. Oh. And, and if you are in London, we're just sitting in the lobby, as you guys can see. So like, <laughs> you can actually like walk in right now and. Speak. <laughs> Yeah. Conference starts tomorrow at nine. Nine, nine like GMT. That. But if you're not in London, then it, you Sorry. can't. You can't <laughs> walk in and say hello. <laughs> if you invite us to where you are, maybe we'll come by and say hello to you in your home. Uh, right. so <laughs> that is an option. Very awesome. Well. So it looks like we are all set. So I think we will wrap it up here. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope everyone has a wonderful Wednesday and a wonderful end to your week. And uh, we'll be out with those materials in the next several hours when recording finishes processing and all that kind of stuff. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.